Thank you. After more than eight years of hard clinical, preclinical work, this was the day when the first patient was treated with the so-called personalized tissue and knit vein from Varigraft. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Petter Bjorkvist. As you probably can hear, I'm not from California. I'm from Sweden. Um, I'm representing Varigraft, a small therapy developer in this space. Varigraft is a privately owned company. Uh, we have owners from uh, three continents, from Europe, from Asia, and from the US. The company purpose is to provide personalized tissues for transplantation. Let me start with some personal reflections. We are talking about organs today, and uh, the question is, can we create organs today? I used to start my presentations with a lobster. I think the lobsters are a very good animal because, as you may know, if you take off a claw from a lo lobster, there will be a new claw grown out again. Very elegant. Unfortunately, us human beings are not having exactly that capacity, so we need some help. Remember these type of slides. What you see here is not an organ. This is an organ, and as you can see, there is a bioprinter and an organ. It's a an heart. And I'm personally a strong believer of bioprinting, but um, we cannot um, create these type of organs uh, today. I think it's a decade at least before we take a bioprinted major organ to the clinic. So the question is, what can we do? We can personalize organs and make them clinically useful. So the problem we are talking about today is that the patients, they need new organs. You heard Jeff talk about that earlier on, and that is very much true. Uh, but unfortunately, if we just transplant, this new organ will be rejected by the immune system. Uh, we will also see that the only way of overcoming this today is to immunosuppress the patient. This is a lifelong treatment. This is a treatment with a lot of side effects. For example, increased risks of cancer. So, as a, cons as a consequence of that, we are transplanting hearts and liver and kidneys, but a lot of organs are not transplanted today because the price of immunosuppress the patient for the rest of his or her life is too high. So the question is, does it have to be that way? I don't believe so. So let me present Varigraft's um, patent protected technology to personalize tissues. Um, we do that because then we can transplant all kinds of tissues without reje rejection and without the use of immunosuppressive agents. So let me quickly walk you through this. This is a donor. You see this donor is uh, donating a blood vessel as an example. You have already seen this this afternoon. We apply a first technology called decellularization. We basically take off everything that gives an identity to this organ, meaning cells and DNA. We end up with an empty scaffold containing of proteins. Note that this scaffold can easily be stored for years in the freezer. Now we come to what is unique with our, with our company. We have done what is called recellularization for decades. And typically you identify a certain cell type, most often a stem cell uh, population. So you have to identify these cells, you have to isolate them from somewhere, and you have to expand them. This is typically a process of, of months, up to four to six months. Um, we are not using anything of that. We are using blood from the patient. So we take a small blood sample, um, 
about 50 ml from the patient. We make a blood solution and the scaffold that we receive from the donor together with our blood solution will make the trick and personalize the, the scaffold in as little time as one week. So in one week, instead of many months, we have a personalized organs that is ready to be transplanted. Of course, this is the timelines I'm talking about now is good for blood vessels. So, uh, ready to be transplanted. So let me cut a long story short. We have, of course, run all kinds of preclinical models. What you see here is from a pig model where we have introduced our personalized uh, vein graft for one year. After one year, we take it off, and as you can see, there is a very nice, shiny inner surface or the lumen of the of the graft. If you look more carefully, um, before you sacrifice the animals, this uh, uh, vascular graft is working very well after one year. And if you look with other technologies, you see some very nice stainings for um, CD31, indicative of endothelial cells. So in all kinds of preclinical model, this is working. So now to the, to the clinical journey we are doing. You know, our bodies are full of blood vessels. We decided to start with a blood vessel in the thigh or groin region. This is a very interesting uh, system because we have blood vessel taking the blood down to the feet, and then when we walk, the muscle pump is pumping the blood up again to the heart. Uh, but interestingly, uh, we are animals on two legs, so we have gravity that is trying to get this blood down again to the feet. But in this area, we have valves that are very uh, simple structures uh, that are opening when the blood is trying to go up and closing when the blood is trying to go down. Unfortunately, there is in Europe and US more than 2.2 million patients with something called chronic venous insufficiency. And this is a disease uh, caused by the, that these valves are failing. failing. Uh, unfortunately for the patients, uh, then the blood is going down to the feet all the time and the patients are experiencing swelling, a lot of pain, often something called heavy legs, and gradually and unfortunately leg ulcers are formed by this increased pressures down to the feet. This is an indication and a group of patients that we would like to help with our technology. So we are basically personalizing human, uh, a piece of a human uh, donated vein. So they are coming, coming today from uh, deceased donors. And as you can see, the specification here, it's only a small part of the vein, uh, good enough to cover the, the valves and to suture it into the, to the patient. Um, you will see in this little slide or, or um, film our personalized tissue and need vein uh, and how we have produced it for the patients. If you are looking carefully, you can see the valves opening and closing. So as you have understood, uh, we have started this clinical journey now, so we have a handful of patients into this trial in Europe. Um, and we will in total have 15 patients in this first phase one, two trial. So this is very exciting for us. The first patient has been nine months into the trial and the valves are working and importantly, the symptoms are rapidly uh, disappearing from this patient. So the business model for Varigraft is easy. We are going to uh, produce and commercialize these grafts, at least in Europe and the US. Uh, we are open to, to out, an out-licensing model in the rest of the world. And in this field, it, it's worth noting that we have, of course, done a lot of health economy analysis, and uh, these analyses are really confirming um, that the, the, the business model is compelling and that this uh, reimbursement is supported by the very lean and cost-efficient manufacturing process. As you have understood, only one week compared to months is, is making our uh, cost of manufacturing very low compared to our peers. 
So our first product is this per personalized tissue in the knit vein, but we have a second generation of products being arteries, and this is a more mature market where a market that is today occupied by a lot of synthetic grafts mainly, you know, may know that synthetic grafts are widely used. For example, Gore is producing Gore-Tex grafts. Other companies are producing them. And I should say they are working decently well for many indications, but also connected with a lot of side, effect, side effects, mainly attributed to that they are not biological materials, so thrombosis, infections, etc. So we think a fully biological personalized graft without the need of any immunosuppressive agents is, will be very good on this market. We are also exploring other uh, tissues, but that is another story. Uh, last really scientific thing is, I guess, very important. You may wonder how long we can rely on human donated material. Even in some um, geographies like Japan, we tend to not donate. So. We have a second generation of sourcing of our raw material, and the donors in that model is not humans, they are animals, we have heard about that before. So we are exploring how animals can be the donors, so leftover and waste material from, from other industries can be used here. We take off the cells and the DNA, we personalize with our technology. But also, there is a third step in this letter, I, I, I think, and um, that is bioprinting. So we cannot bioprint the heart, but rather soon we can bioprint simple protein structures like the, the tube that is a decellularized blood vessel is, is, is forming. So we have uh, some major projects going on with some uh, uh, players in that field. Uh, as you can see here. So we really hope that in the future the model will be even more simple. So uh, just um, making some ad for Sweden. Sweden is a country investing a lot of, uh, of science and also the government is behind some, some investments into this field. Um, we hope to increase that even more in the near future. Uh, our research is paid by the investors, but also I have to show you that we have a lot of EU money and Swedish governmental money behind us. So I'm coming to the end, and um, to just remind you why are we doing this and why are we doing this now, I think and know that there is an enormous unmet medical need out there. Uh, for um, new organs and tissues and replacement uh, material. Uh, big players have established uh, this market, at least in the area of arteries, and we are going to compete with them with our fully biological personalized material. So very few uh, peers to us can offer this fully biological personalized material today. Uh, so I think we are doing something unique. Um, and again, the, the trial that is ongoing looks very promising. So the preliminary data is really supporting us to be even more eager in our efforts. So all this is uh, very good. And I would like to end up with my friend, the lobster again, and, uh, and just tell you that if we agree on this, we can together regenerate the future, even though we can't do exactly as the lobster can we can help Mother Nature to do some good for our patients. Thank you very much.